Hey, welcome to Mono Network, and today we're going to talk about history of Ducati motorcycles. Ducati is an Italian motorcycle manufacturer known for sport bikes and street bikes using L-twin engines. Among many models produced by Ducati, the key models are Panigale 1299, Panigale 959, Hyper Motard 939, All Purpose Multistrada 1200, Cruiser Diavel, and so called Post Heritage Ducati Scrambler in all its varieties. So let's get down to it. The company was started in 1926 by three Ducati brothers, Bruno, Adriano, and Marcello, in the northern Italian town of Bologna. At first, the company had nothing to do with motorcycles, but instead managed electrical components, such as radio components. Unfortunately, Borgo Panigale plant was destroyed during World War II bombings, and like many other famous European marks, Ducati rose out of the ashes to its current stature. In 1946, with the help from Italian government, Ducati introduced its very first 50cc engine, named the Pup. It was designed by Aldo Farinelli, and it was a clip-on engine that purchaser had to install himself onto his own motorcycle. Over the next few years, Ducati increased its capacity to the maximum of 125cc. However, it wasn't until 1952 when Ducati introduced the 175cc cruiser that carried an electric starter and the automatic transmission on board. The same year, Ducati introduced Ducati 98, which became a bare bone performance model. One year later, in 1953, Fabio Taglioni joined Ducati and immediately undertook a few projects, which resulted in introduction of such bikes as Tourist 174, Special and Sport, but importantly, a Desmodronic 125cc Grand Prix racer. Taglioni didn't invent the Desmodronic valve operating system, but he took the weakest link in the performance of the engine and took it out of the equation by replacing the valve springs with solid metal bracket that relied on the second cam to open and close valves. Relatively primitive metallurgy of the time meant that the valve springs were the weakest link in the racing engine. According to Taglioni, the specific purpose of the Desmodronic system is to force the valves to comply with the timing diagram as consistently as possible. In this way, any lost energy is negligible, the performance curves are more uniform, and dependability is better. The result was a stable Ducati motorcycle at shocking by the date standards 15,000 RPM. Gianni Dagli Antoni was victorious in 1955 Moto Giro d'Italia on 100cc GS model. He finished with the average speed of 98.90 km an hour, which was faster than most 250cc bikes of the time, and more modern Benelli. On February 25, 1956, with Dagli Antoni leading the racing team, Ducati signed to compete in 125cc category in 1956 Grand Prix, which meant competing against MV Agusta, Mondial, Guilera, German DKW, and Spanish Montesa. Dagli Antoni won Swedish GP with style, three seconds ahead of everybody and record-breaking lap time. Unfortunately, on August 7, 1956, while training at the Monza circuit, Dagli Antoni's life was tragically cut short. He lost control of his motorcycle and crashed in the infamous Lasma curve and died instantly upon the impact. In 1960, Ducati introduced twin-cylinder 250cc, which was practically a fusion of 225cc Grand Prix motors. The motor produced 37 horsepower at 11,600 rpm. As the story goes, Ducati 250 twin was so popular and superior in its performance that legendary Mike Halewood raced the bike on different tracks around the globe after his father, Stan Halewood, ordered 2,000 Ducati 250 twins motorcycle to be produced. As a result of it, Mike Halewood became known around the globe for his speed while his dad became the first Ducati dealer in Great Britain. In 1961, Ducati Scrambler is released. It's largely intended for American market and was produced at the insistence of the Berlin Air Brothers, who were the US importers. Throughout the 60s, Ducati introduced a wide variety of bikes, such as Mark 1 250 with the rare 5 speed transmission in 1965. Mark III series with 250, 350, and 450 engines available and updated the Scrambler with the new 250 and 350 cc engines in 1968. A year later, Ducati introduced 450 single. This bike could go over 170 km an hour and was the first motorcycle that was available to the public with Desmodronic valve actuation. Previously, only works machines had Desmo system, while public had to satisfy with the spring valve action. In 1970, Taglioni grafts two 250 cc top ends together to create a 90 degree V-Twin 500cc Grand Prix racer. This became the onset of the L-Twin engines from Ducati. In June of 1971, Ducati 750 GT makes its debut to the public. The bike carries the L-Twin engine and 6-speed transmission, which although was promising, was negated due to the electrical issues with the bike. However, they had the platform to work with. The following year, Ducati introduced the Desmodronic version of 750 GT at a Mola 200-mile race 
where Paul Smart takes the win, beating Giacomo Agostini on the MV Agusta. 750 GT made 80 horsepower at 8500 RPMs and practically predetermined the fate of Ducati motorcycles for the years to come. Ever since then, the L21 engine became the pinnacle of Ducati motorcycle engineering. Two years later, in 1974, 750SS is released. It is the road version of Paul Smart's racing machine. Another four years later, in 1978, Ducati introduced 900SS, which was used by Mike Halewood, who came out of the retirement to win Isle of Man Tourist Trophy on this machine. This 900SS model became so iconic that Ducati decided to release a race replica named 900MHR that was for hardcore truck riders as it didn't even have an electric starter. In early 80s, Ducati released Panta 500 which became revolutionary in its way for Ducati as it used belt-driven camshaft system as opposed to bevel-driven system, thereby simplifying the construction of the engine. Also, in 1984, Ducati introduced 750F1 which turned out to be very sought-after model featuring special versions such as 750F1 Laguna Seca, 750F1 Santa Monica, and 750F1 Paso. In 1983, the company experienced major change in management as the Ducati was purchased by the Castiglione family and merged with the Kajiva Group. Although risky, this move proved to be very beneficial for Ducati as it got the company more involved into motorsports. The company also released some new models such as Ducati 851, which featured four valve liquid-cooled engine designed by Massimo Bordi. This enhanced design of already classic Desmo engine established a pattern for Ducati sport bikes that would hold for almost 20 years. 1990s became a winning streak for Ducati. It released Ducati 888 that Doug Poland used to win the World Superbike Championship in 1991 and 1992, the same year when naked Ducati Monster 900 was introduced for the first time. It had trellis frame and 904cc air-cooled and oil-cooled engine. In 1994, Carl Fogarty wins the World Superbike Championship on Ducati 916, designed by Massimo Tamburini. This bike became the most iconic bike of the 90s. The following year, Ducati 916 became more widely available available for the public, and Forgery repeats his victory in 1995, 1998, and 1999. In 1996, Troy Corser wins another title for Ducati in the World Superbike Championship. Also, Ducati Company received a major cash inflow when Texas Pacific Group purchased the first 49% of the company in 1996 and remaining 51% in 1998. However, in 1999, the Texas Pacific Group made the company public and sold 65% of shares in the initial public offering, thereby renaming the company into Ducati Motor Holding SPA. The new management made the Monster Dark model the best-selling motorcycle in Italy in 1998-99. In 1999, Ducati introduced model 999, which featured Desmodroning double camshaft, L-twin cylinder engine, trellis frame, lighter wheels and Brembo brakes. However, when the bike became available for the reviews in 2002, the public didn't appreciate the new model, as nothing could have been as good as Ducati 916. In 2003, Hodgson wins World Superbike Championship and Loris Caparossi competes in MotoGP on par with established leaders in Premier Class. In 2005, Ducati introduced the Hyper Motard, which was awarded the best show. It has 1,078cc dual spark Desmodroni air-cooled two-valve 90-degree V-twin engine with fuel injection and weighs under 180 kilograms. The Hyper Motard is capable of speeds in the region of 125 miles an hour or 201 km an hour. In 2013, Ducati upgraded it with the ride-by-wire system, traction control, ABS, and 16-liter or 4.2 US gallon fuel tank. In 2007, when Casey Stoner won the World Championship in MotoGP, it is the first time in Ducati's history when the company won Premier Class. The same year, Ducati 1098 is introduced. It evokes the Tamburini 916. Everything falls into place and diehard Ducati fans are finally happy with the result. In 2008, Troy Bailey's wins his third and final World Superbike Championship, fulfilling his goal to win three championships on three different generations of Ducati sport bikes, 998, 999, and 1098. In 2010, the Multistrada is all new and features an advancement in its electronic package. It is an enormous step up from the original 2003 Multistrada. Four different modes of new version, adjust power and traction control settings for different environments. The S model also allows the 
electronic adjustment of the all-in suspension. In 2011, Ducati introduced its power cruiser, the Diavel. The engine is a returned version of the 1198 Testa Strette from the 1198 Superbike. It features 6-speed constant mash transmission with hydraulic multi-plate slipper clutch and delivers 162 horsepower to the wheel. The same year, Valentino Rossi leaves Yamaha and joins Ducati, thereby replacing Casey Stoner, who defects to Honda. However, the partnership didn't last long and in 2013, Rossi went back to Yamaha after a short two seasons with Ducati. Ducati Panigale 1199 was introduced in 2011 and was the replacement for aging 1198. Ducati claimed that the 1199 Panigale was the world's most powerful production twin-cylinder engine motorcycle with 195 horsepower. Motorcycle Consumer News ranked the 2012 Panigale S with the best rear wheel horsepower to the wet weight ratio of any bike the magazine had ever tested, as well as fifth highest rear wheel horsepower and the 10th highest top speed. Ducati finished second on the 2015 Superbike World Championship season, with Chaz Davies having 5 wins. Leandro Mercando won the rider's title during 2014 FIM Superstock 1000 Cup season. In 2015, Ducati introduced Ducati Scrambler that had 7 different configurations to offer. Classic, Urban Enduro, Icon, 62 with 399cc engine, Flat Track Pro, Full Throttle, and Italia Independent. It featured two valves per cylinder air cooling, ABS, and six speed transmission. The bike received positive comments and reviews from both the journalists and the owners. In 2016, Ducati updated their 899 model by introducing the new 959 model that was highly praised for smoother power bend, increased power, and better stability over the previous models, as well as Monster 1200R that quote unquote is the most powerful monster ever produced, sharing the same 90 degree V twin engine with the Diavel and Multistrada. And that was the history of Ducati motorcycles. If you liked today's video, make sure to smack that like button, give us thumbs up, and subscribe to Moto Network for more Moto content. Also, you can find us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Links in the description. Until then, see you next time.